In this screencast, we're going to explore graph data visualization and graph algorithms with Neo4j. First, we're going to spin up a Neo4j sandbox instance with some Twitter data to create a database to use for this example. Then we're going to apply some graph algorithms like page rank and community detection. And finally, we'll see how we can use a JavaScript library called NeoVizJS to create graph visualizations that we can embed in a web app. Now, there are many different motivations and tools for creating graph visualizations. This includes tools for exploring the graph, the type of interactive visualizations you might see in Neo4j browser, and visual visualizations for showing the results of some analysis. These can be interactive, something to be embedded in a web app, or static, meant to convey meaning that might be used in print or a blog post. I'm going to focus on a specific tool that addresses specific goals of graph visualization. This tool is NeoVizJS and is used for creating JavaScript-based graph visualizations that are embedded in a web app. It's basically a combination of the Neo4j JavaScript driver to connect to and fetch data from Neo4j and a JavaScript library for visualization called VizJS. NeoViz can also take into account the results of graph algorithms like page rank and community detection for styling the visualization by binding property values in the graph to visual components. Specifically, there are three style components that can be styled according to the results of graph algorithms. The first is binding node size to the result of a centrality algorithm. So this allows us to see at a glance the most important nodes in the network. Visually grouping communities or clusters in the graph is done with the use of color so that we can quickly identify these distinct groupings. And finally, styling relationship thickness to an edge weight in social network data. This might be the number of interactions between two characters. In logistics and routing data, it might be the distance between two distribution centers. That would be useful for pathfinding. So we're going to use the Twitter Trolls sandbox as our data set. This data uh, contains tweets from known troll accounts, including retweets. And it's specifically the retweets that we're going to be interested in today. So what we want to do is look where trolls have retweeted other trolls and run page rank and community detection to try to find the most important trolls and see if we can uh, group those into clusters. Now here we have a user that posted a tweet and a user who posted another tweet that retweeted that first tweet. So we have a implied retweets relationship between the two users. So our first step will be to find those inferred retweets relationships and run our graph algorithms. So I'm going to switch over to Neo4j Sandbox. Now I've already signed in and, and spun up this Twitter Trolls Sandbox instance, but anyone can do that. Just sign in uh, and select the Twitter Trolls instance. Uh, you can see lots of other uh, data sets that you can load as well, but this is the one we're going to use today. If we look in the Details tab, we can see we have the connection information for our Neo4j instance, including IP address and, and password. And we also have access to Neo4j browser for this instance. Neo4j browser is a query workbench for working with Neo4j. And in the case of the sandbox instances, they all include these interactive browser guides that embed images and queries and text to help us explore the data. Uh, I'm going to skip the guide and we'll just write some queries uh, on our own here. Now, the first thing that we need to do is create the retweets relationships connecting the troll accounts. So let's write a cipher query matching on the graph pattern for all retweets. 
So where a troll has posted a tweet and there's another tweet that retweets that tweet. And we need to grab both of the troll users. Then we'll do an aggregation for all distinct pairs of these trolls. We'll count the number of retweets. Then let's create our retweets relationship where R2 retweets R1. And on this relationship that we're creating, so here R refers to this retweets relationship. And let's set, set a relationship property called count that's equal to the count of retweets in this case where R2 has retweeted R1. So let's go ahead and run that. And we end up creating uh, a few hundred new relationships. We can verify this if we inspect the data model. We can see now that we have this troll retweets troll relationship in our data model. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is run page rank on this retweets piece of the graph. So let's run page rank on the troll nodes following the retweets relationships. And let's be sure to write the data back. Don't just compute it, but update the nodes with a page rank property. So now we can see which trolls have the highest page rank score. Uh, so match on all trolls, order by page rank in descending order. Let's look at the top 10. Uh, and so we can see here are the top 10 screen names of, uh, of the top 10 trolls by page rank. Okay. And the next algorithm we're interested in is something uh, that can help us identify communities. We have a few different options for community detection. Uh, let's use the label propagation algorithm. In this case on troll nodes following the retweets relationship, label propagation, uh, we choose a direction and again, we need to write that data back to the graph. Let's this time set a community property that identifies the community. And also let's uh, be sure to take into account the weight of the relationships. Uh, remember we set that count property on those relationships. Okay, so we run that, um, let's verify that data was written back. If we just select some trolls at random here, we can see now that we have a community value as well as a page rank score for these nodes. Okay, great. So now I'm going to get side by side uh, with my text editor here. And let's jump over to a blank HTML document uh, starting off, and I've opened that in Chrome here. So what we want to do now is pull in this data from Neo4j and create a graph visualization, something that we might be uh, embedding in a web application, taking advantage of some of those graph algorithms that we just ran. And we're going to use this NeoViz.js JavaScript library to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the GitHub page for NeoViz. Now I can go to the, the release tab and, and grab the JavaScript file for the latest release. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to grab the link to pull that in from, uh, from the CDN. And we'll go ahead and do that um, inside head here, that's fine. So pull in our JavaScript file for the library. Let's make the text just a little bigger. There we go. Okay. So um, imagine this is our, our web application 
and we want to create a visualization somewhere in here. Maybe this is a, a dashboard uh, or something like that. Well, we need uh, a body and let's create a single div here and we'll set an ID uh, on this div. Okay, now uh, I'm going to add uh, an onload function call here. So when the page has loaded, let's call this draw function and let's define uh, this draw function up here in, in a script tag. So what draw is going to do is it is going to create a new NeoViz instance, specifying some uh, configuration and then render that visualization. So we say uh, viz is new, NeoViz passing in this config object and then render uh, the viz. So NeoViz takes this config object which specifies how to connect it to Neo4j and how to style our visualization. So for instance, we'll need to add a uh, container ID. In this case, that's the, the DOM element that we want to populate with our visualization. We'll need to specify a server URL, a server user, and password to connect to Neo4j. And then we'll also need to specify what labels and relationships we want to visualize. And we'll need to specify an initial cipher statement for uh, grabbing some data from Neo4j to populate our visualization. Uh, in this case, we want to match on all trolls that retweet other trolls and return all of those. Now we don't have to specify this initial cipher. Uh, although if we don't specify that, we will pull all of the data in uh, into our visualization, uh, which we don't want to do in this case. Okay, so let's jump back to Neo4j Sandbox. We need our connection information to connect to Neo4j. So let's copy the IP address. Now in the server URL, we're going to use the bolt protocol. And we want to be sure to grab the bolt port, not the HTTP port. Bolt is the binary protocol for Neo4j that the Neo4j drivers use to connect to and, and talk to Neo4j. Uh, HTTP, uh, that port is the one that Neo4j browser is served on. So we don't want that. Username is Neo4j, so we'll set that and specify uh, the password. Okay, so let's save that and go back and refresh our page. And let's see if we uh, can visualize anything here. So we'll refresh that. And we don't have a visualization yet. There we go. Okay, so we can see here that fetched some data uh, from Neo4j and it's showing us uh, the results of the Cypher query where trolls uh, have retweeted other trolls. So if we zoom in here a bit, we can see, um, yep, here's, uh, here's a troll that has retweet connections uh, to other trolls, but that's not telling us much information. So let's update our config object. Uh, in this case, let's specify the styling that we want for the troll label. We'll specify uh, the property to use for the caption. In this case, that, that's user key or the screen name. And we're now we're going to say, I want the size of the troll nodes to be proportional to the value of the page rank property and similarly take into account the value of the community property for our troll node. Remember, we ran our page rank algorithm to update that value for page rank and, and label propagation to set the value for community. So now when we refresh that, uh, we can see 
pretty clearly the result of our community detection algorithm. So here we can see uh, these green nodes uh, are one community. We can see uh, the purple nodes here, blue here. So we can see some distinct communities that were identified. And we can also see that some nodes are larger than others. So here's the founding sun. I remember this account had the highest page rank score. Uh, and we can see here that it's the largest node in our visualization. Um, okay, there's just one more uh, change we're going to make here. So let's configure how we want to style the retweets relationship. I'm just going to uh, turn off the caption since the, the caption is the same. They're all retweets relationships. Uh, and we're going to use the count property uh, to style the thickness of the relationship. And we'll go ahead and, and refresh that page to generate the visualization again. We're fetching data from Neo4j, and then we're rendering our visualization. And now we can see uh, that the size, the thickness of our relationship is now proportional to the count property. So here we can see that, uh, for instance, uh, count here 36. So this user has retweeted the other uh, 36 times and it has a thicker relationship or a stronger connection uh, in this case where the value is just two. Okay, that's the, the basic approach for using NeoViz to generate graph visualization with data uh, in Neo4j. There are uh, some other layouts, some other styling options that we can use. Uh, they're described in the documentation on, uh, on the README on GitHub for NeoViz. If there are features you'd like to see added, uh, I would encourage you to open, uh, open an issue on GitHub so that we can, uh, we can start working on those. And finally, I just want to leave you with a few resources based on things we talked about today. Uh, so the first is Neo4j Sandbox, which we saw as a great tool for spinning up Neo4j instances uh, with data sets. Uh, the GitHub page for NeoVizJS is the second link there. Uh, the code for the uh, example that we used today, as, long, as well as some other examples, are on that GitHub page as well. So you can find the code there. And then there are two pages on Neo4j.com in the developer section one on data visualization uh, and another that goes into more detail on some of the graph algorithms that we used. Uh, we looked at centrality and community detection. Uh, there are lots of other algorithms in there as well, things in, in pathfinding uh, and so on. So if you're interested in, in graph algorithms, I would encourage you to check out that page. Great, well, that's it. Thanks a lot.